Welcome to another Soccer Down Here 1v1. Time to catch up with North Carolina Football Club President and General Manager Kurt Johnson after the announcement earlier this week about the move from USL Championship to USL League One. Kurt, thanks for hanging out with us for a 1v1. Glad to do it. Looking forward to it. All right. So now that you've had a, a couple of days and folks like me have been uh, hunting you down to ask you about it, what's it, what's it been like now that it's officially on paper and now that the movement is in place, what, what's been your initial step back after, say, the last 24, 48 hours? Well, excitement. Um, and uh, the specific talking about it and, and planning behind the scenes. So what is on that whiteboard? And I know folks, sometimes they'll have a whiteboard where it's uh, a big board behind them in an office. It could be on magnets on a refrigerator. Uh, I don't know the size of your whiteboard or the, the planning board right now, but I guess how big is it and where is it right now? Yeah, I think, look, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a mental whiteboard as well as a, a physical whiteboard. So it's both. And it, of the sport uh, nationally, the landscape of the sport in North Carolina and our club. And um, what I'm excited about is doubling down on both what, what we're good at as a club and, and what we need to get better at. And the reality is, is developing players uh, and all that goes into developing players is a huge opportunity for us. Um, we've had successes and yet we can be a lot better at it. And, and part of that starts with the the day-to-day -day focus on that, um, investing in it, uh, both in terms of, of the financial side as well as um, minutes, coaching, et cetera. For those not familiar with your footprint and the impact that North Carolina FC has, Break it down when it comes to fan support, academies, all of, all of those aspects of the game that we like to talk about when, when it comes to North Carolina FC. What kind of an impact do you guys have from your perspective and the footprint there in North Carolina? Well, look, I mean, you know, the numbers show that we're the largest youth to pro soccer club uh, around. And you know, how we measure that is the youngest of the young boys and girls kicking the ball for the first time all the way up to having a, a men's pro team and a women's pro team and all that's in between that. So so size wise, um, we're, we're impactful in, in our in our community, in our region and, and statewide and, and certainly nationally with the the competitive nature of our uh, elite teams, as well as uh, all the different events that we host as a club um, at the youth level and at the professional level from a facility standpoint, et cetera. So, you know, we, we are impactful and, and we can do more. We can be better. Um, and, uh, you know, that's it in terms of the, the youngest of the young um, and their playing experiences. Uh, creating a more diversified club in terms of participation of black and Latino players, um, expanding the game into, into the cities, um, enabling kids to, to play in their neighborhoods, um, as opposed to driving 20 minutes to a, or 30 minutes to a soccer complex. All those are, are initiatives uh, at the youth level. Um, and in the pro game, you've seen what we've announced uh, in terms of a double down on, on elite player development, uh, providing professional minutes to our best young players. Uh, those, are, those are initiatives for, for 2021 and beyond. When you look at everything that the USL is accomplishing right now, regardless of level, whether it's championship, league one, league two, uh, the USLA, which I know will be an integral part of what North Carolina FC's future is when it comes over the, the next you know, generation, next decade, whatever you want to phrase it. 
there are a lot of moving parts in the USL that fit what North Carolina FC is trying to accomplish. You're going into League One where you're seeing a lot of folks with the same mindset as well, with South Georgia Tormenta, with Chattanooga, uh, with a lot of these teams that are there with Richmond as well. So I think that having all of these like minds gets into that thought that we were discussing before we, we came on here for this 1v1 about rising tides. And I think that it, it, you're in with like minds. And I think that that's important for the growth of not just USL, but USLA and every aspect that you guys dive into. Yeah, I think what, what USL has done really well is they've created landing spots for a, a variety of different models um, of professional club and amateur club. And, uh, you know, you're right. There, there is uh, a groundswell of, of development-minded clubs uh, throughout the United States. And, you know, some of us have, that have been in this for a long time, it's, it, you know, maybe it starts with finally. Finally, we see the, um, the fruits, the labor, you know, the many have invested with development for a long time. And for a variety of reasons, uh, you know, we haven't had the success as a country or individual clubs that we, we that we would have wanted. So some of this is evolution and revolution. The evolution of the American player, the respect worldwide for that American player, the respect in our own country for the American player is is part of the evolution. But some of it's revolutionary. It is literally you know, what we've done with, with Castle now in CFC Youth and, and creating um, where in, in spirit there was a youth to pro uh, model. Now, in fact, there's a, a, a youth to pro collaboration with, with coaches bridging the gap between the two teams or between the, the youth and the pro um, with resources being shared and, and uh, insight being shared and and this is the next stage of of the growth of the game in north carolina and in the development of of uh of the best possible talent that we can produce a lot of folks say that revolution is evolution only faster how difficult is it to either have evolution or revolution in this current landscape well, it's difficult in the current landscape because the target is always moving. We don't know where, we don't know exactly when. I think back to Bob Gansler, who has been in the American game and the global game for a lot longer than 99% of us. And, you know, when I would get excited as a young general manager and say, oh, you know, we're going to win the World Cup in a decade. We're going to create, you know, uh, a Maradona in, in a decade, you know, he would step back and, and talk about uh, it, it takes a complete infrastructure to accomplish what we all want to accomplish. It takes a, a stable division one league. It takes, um, you know, clubs in, in communities um, doing the grassroots work. It takes coaches uh, and education. Um, it, it takes money and investment from owners and, and partners. And all of that is evolutionary. You can't just say, I want it to happen, um, invest a billion dollars or two billion or 10 billion, and it, it happens. So that's where I get the evolutionary part. Some of it just does take time and some of it is for be aggressive and you can't sit on your hands and just wait for it. And an example of that would be our collaboration with Cal Castle now in CFC Youth and this very large youth to pro club um, and the resources that come with that. When you get to see as a club president and a general manager, when you get to see the light come on for a youth player about whether it's the lesson of the day or see their game grow and see the, they themselves see the promise 
that a lot of folks have seen in them. What's it like for you in a front office position to see a light come on for a player like that? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that is, um, you know, fueled my fire in the last four years is, is working with the North Carolina Courage team. Um, and, uh, you know, all that they stand for and yes, that many of them have overcome. And so, yeah, there's so many, if, if your eyes are open, there's so many examples of growth. Um, maybe where I get the most frustrated is not that people, um, you know, not that people are frustrated by the pace of growth that I'm the, I'm the same way, you know, I want it tomorrow. Um, but those that, that maybe, um, don't have their eyes open or fully open to the progress that's being made. Um, I still think that, um, you know, we are making a ton of progress. Uh, we're taking more steps forward and, and if, if you open your eyes, you see it. So that, at the end of the day, boys, girls, men, women, there's so many ex- examples of the growth uh, of the player and, and how soccer is woven into the fabric of our communities now. And yet still how far that we have the opportunity to take it. I know a lot of folks are – and anticipating the 2021 season, regardless of level that we're talking about when it comes to the USL, how difficult was 2020 to navigate from a multi-club standpoint? And I'm not necessarily wanting to get into the specific financials of it. You can break news there if you want, but how difficult was it for North Carolina Football Club to navigate through the 2020 seasons as they were? Well, from a purely financial standpoint, it was a disaster. Um, it was, uh, it, it, like many businesses, it was disastrous. Um, and that, I don't think that's too strong a word. I mean, we've had to uh, rethink, reimagine, reappropriate what, what made it doable um, and continue make it doable is there's so many season ticket members and uh you know understand the situation and and just say look we're gonna we're gonna keep our money with you we're gonna keep our our investment with you and uh we're gonna ride this out as long as our our business and as long as our individual finances can can tolerate it and that's, I'm sure, the same for for every, basically every sports, professional sports team and organization in, in the country. So um, very, very hard, uh, but not anything that, that a lot of businesses aren't, aren't confronting. And we're just grinding away every day, uh, you know, finding the light and finding uh, ways to get through it. And fortunately, there's a lot of interest in soccer, uh, and um, there are a lot of different tools in the tool belt to to deal with it. Um, and USL would be an example of that. You know, uh, navigating uh, and, and working collaboratively with them. Um, they've done some things, certainly proactively, to to benefit the teams. Um, deferral of some payments and and things like that. So. Look, everybody's doing their best to to get through this and um, get fans back in the sands in a safe way, and and then the revenue uh, begins to flow again. North Carolina Football Club President GM Kurt Johnson hanging out with us for another couple of minutes here for a soccer down here one v one. When it comes to the fan response, you alluded to it a little bit, but what has been the immediate response of fans about the League One announcement? Um, I, you know, I think, um, you know, those that are dialed into our club, I think make, makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, those that maybe are not as, as focused in on, on how large our club is and, and, uh, the successes and still opportunities, uh, you know, maybe 
maybe it takes uh, a bit more to understand it. You know, I've, I've seen it reported that it's a, that it's a step down or, um, you know, that uh, it, it, it's, uh, you know, in essence, a disappointment or I, I don't, I don't feel that way at all. And I think the vast majority of our fans are going to be excited about playing Richmond and Greenville and, and Madison Etc. Um, just like they were excited about playing Tampa and uh, and Charlotte um, and Memphis. Um, so I, I think what our fans expect out of us is to continue to evolve the club as the landscape of soccer in North Carolina evolves. And clearly, MLS and Charlotte um, and the the resources uh, and the the plan that they have there absolutely impact soccer in North Carolina. So we, we can't put our head inside the shell and think for a second that, that the way soccer was in 2017 or 16 when Steve Malik became our owner is, is the way it is now. Um, we also see clearly what we need to do as a club in terms of investment in our young players. Our, our young players need professional minutes um, they need to play in that environment to be able to take uh, a never, another step forward. Uh, and we've got players that we're very excited about putting in that, putting in that environment. So um, not sure if that was a real cohesive answer to the exact question you asked, but uh, we're excited about it. I think the vast majority of people, you know, the, the plan resonates with them. And now it's up to us to execute the plan and for it to be, productive and and deliver deliver results all right and so once again if you want to break news here you can but when it comes to league timetables and and milestones what's on the calendar to get ready for a 2021 league one season right now well um announcing our our technical staff uh will be uh is a front burner item you know, signing players uh with the context of of league one and this this renewed and double down uh, uh, development uh, will be um, quickly follow that. And uh, we're, we're very excited, um, you know, about that. We, we know that we've got players in the club uh, currently that are going to jump on the field and do, do well and, and benefit from the minutes. We also know that some that have left the club to pursue opportunities um, are going to be able to be attracted back uh, with playing time 18, 19, 20 year, year old. So, so that's really, really significant. And also before we go, uh, one last question having to do with Dave Sarakin. And it was announced that Sarakin would not be returning for next season as the team goes into USL League. One, uh, your thoughts on Dave Sarakin not returning? Oh, I think, you know, we, as it relates to Dave le- leaving, we, I uh, think very highly of Dave. Dave uh, was fantastic for the USL championship team for, for two seasons. Last year was, was a very difficult one for everyone. We navigated through that. The 2019 season um, was, was really positive. I think the reality is, is that, that we're, we're changing – our, our model, we're changing what the priorities are. Um, you'll see a, a technical staff in place that, uh, that are, you know, true bridges between the youth and, and the, the pro league one team and are living and breathing it every single day. Um, and, and so it's, it's new and it's different. And uh, we'll be hiring, you know, people that, uh, you know, I, I think uh, will thrive in that, day-to-day environment between the youth and the pros. All right. So my last question for you is when it comes to 2021 and the, the new approach and the new steps that North Carolina FC is taking as a club, look in the crystal ball for me, five years, maybe another year or two. What would you like to see the evolution of North Carolina FC be when it comes to not just the on the field product, but the product and how it continues to to grow and evolve as a property? 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, over the coming years, what you're going to see is is at least half the roster be uh, academy or academy aged players that are they're getting uh, the bulk of the minutes. Um, current academy players or recently departed, you know, uh, graduated academy players. Um, so I think you will see that over the coming years. We haven't even mentioned our downtown South project and our uh, work toward a, a downtown stadium. And clearly that is part of the, the long-term plan. Um, we've just recently gotten rezoning. Steve recently closed on, on the last big plot of land, 40 plus acres. So that continues to move forward. And all of this will have a line of sight toward one day playing in a downtown stadium and, and packing that stadium with fans and, and filling the team um, with, with uh, locally uh, uh, produced players. So you'll see a time where we're, we're packing our, our facility. We have, you know, 10,000, you know, season ticket holders. And we have uh, a, a business that is um, moving players on and is generating revenue from, from that. Kurt Johnson, North Carolina Football Club president and general manager. A very, very busy week on a bunch of different fronts there at North Carolina Football Club. Thanks for hanging out with us for a 1v1. We'll be keeping an eye on everything with the club, League One, the footprint in North Carolina. So thanks for hanging out with us for a 1v1. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate all that you guys are doing to uh, to tell the story of, of our clubs and our sport. And uh, thanks for the work.